Yo, so, this is a cool spot, and I invite you to check it out with me. Uh, this is a totally cool spot. It is a park in progress. Now, a lot of people when they make a park, they're going to go in and get rid of everything and put in what they want. I'm not doing that. Uh, I did get rid of pine trees because those were keeping everything else down. They're an oppressive, coniferous plant that are fine in their place, but they tend to rule, and they're not a ruler I feel like having in all spaces. Raw. This is an oak tree. That's an oak tree. That's an oak tree. That's an oak tree. That's an oak tree. We'll get to that tree in a bit. That's really cool. Uh, there's a bunch of acacias over here. Those are doing really well and getting bigger than anywhere else on the entire property before. Uh, there's capulines in here that are coming in because birds pooped out their seeds. There's native banana. Oh, no, there's medicinal banana, which is from Arupan and I don't know where else. Uh, what's the name of that one? Musa and Sete is the name, scientific name. You can look it up. It's mostly just grown over. And so what I'm sharing with you right now is a living sculpture that you can see pictures of online and that you can learn from if you want to create your own spaces that are biodiverse and really cool. So this is like a food forest class, except in this case, it's not just food forest. What we're doing here mostly is letting the native things grow up. And we're sculpting those into spaces that we want them for maximum benefit. Uh, you know how they do bonsai? They tie the plant up in wire, it's plant bondage. I'm not a big fan because they're small and you have to water them and I think they're for people with extra time or they just don't think at the scale I do. Those folks who come in here, if people want to come in here with bonsai skills and sculpt trees in ways, no metal, no wire, uh, that'd be awesome actually. If they're already thinking about trees as being so cool at this miniature level, then what would happen if they applied their skills and aesthetics to a place that had big trees that could be sculpted over centuries? That sounds exciting. Anyway, so all the plants in here, I mean, I walked through here, I got my machete because I can't walk through, oh, you can't walk through, this, this is a rule, okay? Everywhere's got rules. I'm big on rules, apparently. I could have just illustrated my coolness on my machete right there and I would have cut this rose plant down and that would have sucked. I don't even want people in here with machetes like cutting these branches down because if they cut those, and I understand that meets their momentary need to cut something or to create a space for more feed or I don't know what, but don't hurt any plants in this space. This is a park in progress. This is a biological sculpture in progress. And the most dangerous thing that could ever occur to it is somebody coming here and trying to fuck with it. Don't fix it. There's a plan uh, and, and the, the threat is people. Arr, I wonder how I became a misanth uh, misanthropist. Yeah. Something like that. Anyway, beautiful space. Um, what I'm doing now is talking to you and introducing you to it. Uh, and we're going to define the trails better through here. We'll put in some water features for birds. Um, we're going to make a fire pit or two. So that there's cool fire pits in it. Uh, we're going to plant other kinds of plants. And we're going to sculpt the heck out of the trees. All these trees are living materials for a grand sculpture in this location. And I'm open to ideas from anyone else. I've got my own philosophies and stuff. I'll listen to anybody who's polite. So I can't imagine a better place than this right now for me to exist in. I'm often not happy, actually. But at the moment I am, I've got a hot cup of coffee. And there's nobody here to tell me it's too late in the day to drink it. It's like some time or other. It's four. Four in the afternoon. I'm in mean, a beautiful sun. I don't know how a guy could be in a better place than I'm in right now. I should probably live in the now more often. That's what people say you should do. I don't. I live in the future. I live in the future of this park. I live in the future of the people who will walk here someday and, and they will see these magic trees in a magic space and get to enjoy it. You know? I don't know if anyone's ever tried this. There's a pine tree over there. There's a maguey over there. There's oh, madrones here as well. 
And so we're also thinking not just about the upper layer here, but the lower layer of uh, fungus, of, of um, mushroom habitat. Now, I don't know the long-term thing that will occur with this space. It could be that it has lots of paved area and is like a plaza. I kind of hope it isn't. I'm really looking for it being over half dominated by plants, and I would really rather go in the direction of kind of, uh, oh, I don't know, let's do 80% plants. You know, and let's make little spaces for people in there to be in with some nature in a very central location and, and then we'll go put them off. When they go to sleep, they can sleep somewhere else. When they want to play soccer, they play it somewhere else. When they want to trample every damn thing, that's okay. We can have a space for that. But I'd rather see this space as, as almost all green, you know, very green. This is probably the funnest garden I've gotten to be involved with, um, except for a different garden a couple years ago. So, Well, that's my vision of this space. Hope you enjoy it someday.